Welcome to Film Study Podcast. This is the podcast where we talk about all things all American. Yeah, maybe we'll throw in some other shows and some other movies and stuff in the future. <laughs> I don't know why I paused. <laughs> but anyway, we're here talking episode two of season six of All American. Um, and if there is one thing I can say that I got during the hiatus, during the strike, whenever I ask people's opinions, to give me feedback, to ask me questions, etc., can I say to you, Carmen, you and your name and requesting for you to be on this podcast was up there. Oh, up really? there. Oh, why are you be acting shocked? Oh, I mean, you know people were like, when is Carmen coming on the pop? Yes. <laughs> so Carmen <laughs> is back for episode two. Uh, we were supposed to have Jason, which, you know, sad. He couldn't make it. But um, now you have us two and we're here to talk about public service announcements. So without further ado, this is a very long intro. We're getting into it now. Carmen. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like a, I feel like a first time again. Like it's been a long time, oh. Lord. <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> okay, so I changed it. I wanted to do something different because this is now was like we've done this for a while. We've been doing this for years. So instead of uh, what I, I do ratings, so instead of ratings, we're doing letter grades this season. So what would you rate this episode uh, or grade this episode rather? In A, B, C, or D, and why? Um, I give it a probably a C plus if that's on there. Um, that is a really low grade. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. I could have gave it a D or an F. A C is like that's the middle. True. I guess you. Know? you said, I guess you said like the plus. So yeah. yeah, you know it's close to a B, but you know it's still a C. Um, because like. I don't know. It just was very emotional. It was like more on the down emotional part, mm-hmm. um, which is the only reason I probably give it a C because it was like, you know, it was a lot of down emotional um, emotion this episode. If I'm going just by character growth, I want to give it a B minus, which was originally by grading for last episode, but I think that when I rewatched last episode I mm-hmm. felt like the characters had a lot of growth so I upped the grade a little bit because I said the characters are growing and now I feel you know just watching this episode it was a little of the characters are uh, what do you call it reverting <laughs> so you want to take- reverting back to old habits so you want to uh, take a grade back and- no, no, because that was for the first episode. But I think okay. for this episode, I'm giving it a B minus because I still feel the growth, but I also can t- see some areas where they're not growing <laughs> as quickly and gotcha. super quickly, which is life. Which is life. But that, yeah, the time off. Maybe the time off um, played a part in it. They've been yeah. had a lot of time off. Yeah, B minus, B minus for me. Um, so let's get into the let's get into the storylines. I titled this Patience and Coop storyline, but really it was a patience storyline. Uh we didn't see Coop much this episode, but really. Um so you know, right off the bat in that little intro that we were given, number one, let me say this. This is supposed to be a week after the events of episode one. Mm-hmm. I caught it somewhere. On the second watch, I didn't notice it the first. On the second watch, I caught that it was a week later. Uh, but, you know, Coop is still trying to be there for Patience, uh, and Patience is going home because, you know, she ain't got no boo. Uh, no. <laughs> Liv she and Layla one. have boos she needs that one. live at the bank. <laughs> well, I don't she think she should focus on herself. <laughs> no, she needs a boo. What you mean? She hasn't been with nobody <laughs> since um, Coop. Yeah, I'm saying maybe she should focus on herself because of the mm-hmm. stabbing and she's still recovering and such. She need a boo. She uh, need a boo. Girl, <laughs> I don't know if need is the right word. She need but... a boo. If if, okay. if they got plans on putting Coop back with her, she need a boo. Like, I don't have time for this Coop go back to patient thing. No. She need a boo. We need a That's abort fair. mission. Go ahead. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's fair. Mm-hmm. Um, But 
yeah, they were all at the beach house and Patience was leaving to go back to the uh, the baker's house and Coop decided to go with her so that she wouldn't be alone because we know that Coop does not mind being a sixth wheel or whatever she would be. Seventh? Seventh? No, it's like a... I don't know what the wheel is because there's Me three neither. couples. Seventh, seventh wheel. I was right. Seventh wheel. Um, so anyway, she doesn't mind it, but she was you know, let, let me go take care of patients, et cetera, et cetera. Anywho, they later come to her, Coop and uh, Layla, and say that Miko is out on bail or is about to be out on bail. Uh, the bail is set. And so they think about, hey, maybe we should take a self-defense class. They take a self-defense class. Patients didn't like the self-defense class. Then later, Ryan, who we'll talk about in a second, um, gives Layla some advice about the self-defense and sometimes it reinforces helplessness. I thought that was an interesting take uh, from him. And he right. offers his assistance to help patients. Patients takes him up on that and he starts out there, if you want to call them lessons, with uh, making her, her strong. Carrying, yeah, making her strong, <laughs> aka carrying some boxes in the store. It gave me, um, what is it, Karate Kid? Remember the jacket? Right. Karate- wax <laughs> on, wax <laughs> off. Yeah, it's, that's what it gave me. It gave me Karate Kid. I said, okay, Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> Um, so what did you think about that storyline? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about, um, I mean, I can totally get why she's fearful. I mean, the girl did stab her and she's getting out of jail. I just, I just don't know how to feel <laughs> the about girl it. Did stab- I, <laughs> I'm going to let you know right now, I have zero feelings about this storyline other than I wish it would end quicker. And quicker. that's no fault to the characters I'm just not very or the actors I'm just not very into this storyline I'm sort of over I've I've it, it's it's almost as if I was over it before the storyline even started. started when we saw the seeds of this happening in season five I said please please don't let anything happen to patients I really would prefer not to see that and this is what we're now seeing <laughs> And then it's a year later in their time, and she's still dealing right, with it. So months. it's over a year. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. So yep. that's, that's that's patience. That. But I mean, I, <laughs> I yeah. want. I really want. I really want patience to have a, a love story. Like I'm ready for her to have her love story, and not with Coop. Um, you know, and I'm really ready for her to you know really well you know last season we i did want her to grow from, yeah we saw yeah. her growing in her career last season but like did we we did then she mean, on yeah, tour she did and grow. all that stuff yeah and she did she the... did but i also feel we also didn't get to witness that and i guess that's also why this story feels a little hollow to me mm-hmm. because we keep hearing how she's blown up and we keep hearing how her numbers are shooting up or she has a lot of fans but they in this story they haven't yet i don't think set wise and location wise and really storyline wise found a way to communicate that to us that she's this big pop sensation yeah it definitely doesn't feel that way it doesn't. It, doesn't. Feel that it, way. Fe- it still feels like she's an indie like she artist. Goes, in fact, yeah, it's not like it's like she still go to Crenshaw High. That's what it feels like. It's, like. It still feels yeah. like that. So anyway, Asher and Jamie. Asher and Jamie. <laughs> Asher and Jamie. Don't forget a- Asher, Jamie, and J- um, AJ. And baby yes. AJ. Let me not forget and- baby AJ. Well, I was going <laughs> to start off with baby AJ anyway. Baby AJ is screaming because apparently. Um, teething has just started and i know you had some opinions about how this is just starting why is baby just but, getting teeth so late but you know what I, some some babies do get teeth late and i'm guessing that's what they're going with mm-hmm. um because yeah i was like this baby is almost two <laughs> almost two. i'm just joking you know, but he's literally over one and i don't know i guess they're giving him late teething it just feel like a lot of things they it's, doing. With I him. think he would just be one years old. He's a year. Um, Jamie feels bad about using their support system, uh, and just wondering, can they survive without the village? Um, 
Listen, <laughs> bless him heart. I've never heard somebody complaining about the amount of support that, they're getting. <laughs> listen, that how, that's how you know you're, they're very privileged with their support because who? Exactly. Who's complaining? I mean, I'm not privileged because at the end of the, I'm going to jump to the end of the episode after talking about it with Laura. Laura just gives them Willie's house, which I. <laughs> <laughs> What? Listen, what are you listen, giving away Linda. this man's house? Listen, Linda, I do. I, I'm Why still are you sick giving that. away I'm this still, man's like, house? They just get to move in, like they just move it in, like just like that. Is it okay. rent free? Like that's you know ridiculous. it's rent free. You know it's rent free with Laura. You know oh it. Oh my god! Like, don't get me wrong. I understand the whole we're new parents and. Can we have no, this by I don't get it. Wait, Y'all can no. get a house. Can we have this by ourselves? But, but, oh, yeah, yeah, but my thing is, uh, Y'all can't afford to live by yourself right now. So what like what are we like what are we talking about? Like y'all not okay, so support with helping with AJ is okay, but the financial support, y'all y'all good? Okay, we're good. Like that's not a it's problem. Also <laughs> she don't wanna feel like they can pay bills. <laughs> oh but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. It's so she real, wants, though. No, you're right. It's it so real. Do it all the way. It's so real. It's so real. And I don't know. For me, first off, Billy just decided to move into Willie's house on a whim. <laughs> on yeah, a and, whim. And this was and he did this it cause... last season. Yeah, and he did it so him and Laura could have pretty much their house Some back. time away, exactly. Yes. And he was working in Crenshaw at the time. Yes. But again, none of this is being cleared with Willie. And okay, <laughs> Billy gets a pass because he is his son. But now we're just saying, oh, my daughter and son's friend, sort of, kind of, ish, whatever, now wants him and his girlfriend to live. What? Listen, I'm... <laughs> I'm all for Willie coming home and throwing sense. them out. Logistically, <laughs> and they called it out in the dialogue, but logistically, it doesn't make any sense. How are y'all working in Listen. Beverly Hills and oh, somewhere wherever coastal California is, mm -hmm. and you're living in South Central LA? I need people to understand that driving anywhere near that, like near South Central, through downtown, through to the beaches, whatever, takes. 40 minutes to an hour on a good, just <laughs> average day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just an it, average day. It didn't make sense to me neither. Oh, I after I wait. moved here, I said, no, why is all American pretending these places are like 10, 15 Listen. minutes away? No, for real. For real. <laughs> for real. And, just, like, it, and Asher oh. even said it. Asher was like, yeah, we're going to be further from our job and all this. Like, And this made sense. How? Like, did y'all not just give y'all stuff extra work? But okay, y'all just gonna be <laughs> losing money. Listen. I know Jordan was so excited to pay for some stuff for the baby. Like <laughs> what? So now you just want to pay for all? Of I mean, not the house Listen. apparently, but <laughs> Listen. I love Laura Down. I don't think it was Laura's place to offer up Willie's. Absolutely house. not. I can't wait till Willie come back. He's gonna throw him out. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Willie not coming back. Willie is staying in Florida. He's like, oh, oh, my son's gone. I don't pay attention to my grandkids anyway. Um, <laughs> speaking of his grandkids and speaking to the only time he did pay attention to one of them, football. Football, football, football. Okay, a little smooth transition. Ooh. Okay, okay. I'm trying, you know, getting these <laughs> sea legs back for the podcast. Spencer James and the Condors. Uh, Liv made a comment Girl, about how sang back up. the Condors, exactly yep, the exactly Condors be like. singing back up. It is exactly yes. what it sounded like. Yes. Uh, and here we go on... Spencer James, I'm uncomfortable with media attention. I mean, the Cinderella Condors, how is the team going to feel about that? Oh, people! all people are talking about is me, me, me. I'm pretending that I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Not too much I now. I just Not too much. No, no, seriously. Oh, you know, no. I love them. You They're know, talking I love about me being a top five Heisman pick. <gasps> me? Listen, I 
I love Issa Fisher James, but I really need him to stop acting like he is not loving attention. Like you went through a whole uh what season of people doubting you, you doubting yourself, you was not what you want to be, you had to work. So why not just be real and say, I'm loving it? Right. That's that's all I want from him. <laughs> yeah, just say I'm loving it because honey, coach called you out real quick. Wait, I just skipped. Oh, it will. Yep. You, see, you was ready. You was ready to talk about it. So, uh, in the practice, um, I did want to call out the practice because obviously the media was still around Spencer and asking the team about Spencer and how Spencer has helped them and how what Spencer's leadership looks like, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And as they should, because he's the star player. He mm-hmm. is the star wide receiver of that team, and. He, I'm, he's, I'm sure the, it looked like almost like 90% of their offense, maybe even more the, how Kenny was running the show. Um, but I wanted to point out that they practice the Condor special where it's a little fake sort of, what is it? I think it's a flip that Jordan, <laughs> me getting really into, <laughs> me getting really into the football aspect. I was about to say, now you know you're on your where, own football, football for he real. Did, where Jordan does a, where Jordan does like a, a toss behind as the, the, uh, another wide receiver comes in motion, t- tosses it. Uh, the wide receiver then throws to Jordan who's downfield and that's like a trick play. Um, but they practiced it to execute it because people were had some things to say about this play and that it, it didn't involve Spencer and I want to get to that later. But I'm just saying that they they practiced that in preparation for this first game that they have. Uh so anyway, Mac, who is the new uh coach, introduces himself to Jordan and tells him to look out for the team's best interest. I'll also note this that Jordan gives props to Spencer. He says, you know, Spencer makes my job easy uh as a quarterback because he's so easy to throw to, etc, etc, etc. Uh and then Spencer again is having this, just like he told Liv, talking to Coach Kenny about how the media is a circus, but then Kenny tells him the media is important. And then literally we shift to Grace randomly. Number one, where are you even coming from? Why are you not in Oakland? <laughs> We Listen. shifted to Grace saying something, saying some, Spencer, you and your dream. This is your dream. And dream, 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 dream. <laughs> your dream is not a distraction. You don't have to worry about getting a college degree. You don't have to worry about your relationship or your team. Just your dream. <laughs> That's literally what she <laughs> I mean, I understood some of it when she was trying to get him to see. Some of it. Some of it. Yes. Emphasis on some. (laughs) Because she was like really saying, she was like, you know, like, it's like, it's like what we just said. He was trying to act like this is not something that he was sure that he he wants. wants. Exactly. So it was like, she was saying like, listen, you've been talking about this since you've been putting posters on the wall. So we're not going to act like you don't want this, that you're not excited about this. Like, it's like she was trying to call him out or trying to downplay it when it was like, no, we're going to acknowledge that you are getting closer to the very thing you've been wanting since you was a kid. So, right. you, don't, you don't feel like she was just telling him, like, stop trying to add all the other stuff in and just be real? No? Just me? I think it would have, no. I agree to a certain point. To a mm-hmm. certain point, I agree. And I think that she had some good things to say to him in terms of this is exactly what you've been working for. I don't think, and I'll get back to this when we come back around to live that it should have ballooned into this. um, You don't need to worry about school. Oh, I want you to finish your degree and things like that. And, oh, you don't need to worry about your relationship. I understand she's his mom, Mm -hmm. but it just felt, first of all, that's almost never been grace to say, uh, and you know, I'd be getting on grace, but grace has never just been like, oh, just focus on football and that's it. And I know she sort of addressed it by saying, oh, I want you to get your degree. But for Mm -hmm. her to say disregard everything, except for the NFL, it was a little, it just felt a little forced to me. It you, felt so a little forced. Saying, it felt like it came it out of nowhere. something that she normally would say. No, I don't gotcha. think it's something that she would normally say. It just felt so red. I told you how many times she said, 
I mean, you could hear how many times she said tree. Oh, your posters <laughs> in your room. What has Grace ever mentioned any of that crap? <laughs> I don't and know. Again, I think like it makes sense the basis of what she was saying in terms of this you is something you like want so go that for she it. Normally but she say. didn't yeah, she didn't have to say, she I feel like she was just doing the most in this conversation with him um mm-hmm. in terms of oh, the NFL is not a distraction because that's not the truth. Like it's going to be like he's just going to have to learn to live with the distraction which is what we're getting through as we move through this football storyline. And can I just say that I'm not really feeling, I, I don't know, Coach Kenny. I, he, he I was, I, I have a line on this that says Kenny sucks, and I'll explain why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I'll explain why. Mm-hmm. Uh, but more than that, distraction, then we get to, uh, the night before the big game and obviously they had to leave because the baby was screaming etc 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 uh it was very interesting on this conversation between Liv and Spencer around Billy and what he would say and like I said I I didn't know it would come up this soon but with Grace was saying to Spencer in terms of I just felt these conversations were a little convenient and it's not I don't, I I just, I guess I don't understand where people were getting this. You're thinking of too many people right now because he wasn't. He was just saying, oh, uh, this, there's media attention around the team. There's media attention around me. And then everybody said, oh, there's media attention, Spencer. You don't have to be the hero. And I was like, how does one plus one equal 20? I don't understand (laughs) where we're getting Spencer's hero complex from what he's saying. It lives just like, oh, you know what? This is what my dad would say. He would say, it's time to think of you. He would, because Billy was selfish. But he would, say, <laughs> he would say, it's time to think of you. You play regular football as a team for the team, but you play pro football for yourself and your family. <laughs> and that starts with the draft. <laughs> which is, wait, which is kind of a, which is kind of like a statement going against each other to say, think about right. you and then to say, you play for you and your family. So it's not right. just thinking about him if, he, if it's considered his family. But I just think the overall message that everybody was trying to get him to see was that he wasn't as bothered and he wasn't as unsure as he kept trying to put on to be. Like, you're not as bothered and you're not as you're not as unsure as you're trying to put on. Like, he's trying to right. put on. Like, and I wish they would have just said that instead of instead of trying to find Pacifying. ways around saying Pacifying. that yes yeah, yes yes yeah that's a perfect phrase for that and you know what it reminded me i literally wrote this because this is exactly what came into my head do you remember you don't watch movies so you might not get this reference but 17 again with tia and tamara when there's this line where uh grandpa jean says oh life life's not all about the hotties and the, the people that he were with, they were just like, wait, what? What are you? Okay. And then he leaves. He exits out the doors. And the people turn to each other. And they're just like, what does he mean? Life's not all about the hotties. It's all about the hotties. And that's how I felt with Liv. It's just like, what do you mean you're not playing for your team? Of course you're playing what for What's crazy team. is I have seen that movie, but it's been so long ago. I do not remember. I, re- I do not remember. It's, I don't <laughs> even know why thought about that lot but it was just like the first of all grandpa jean was right but it, it was just that like absurdity of like what do you mean you're not playing for your team even in the pros yes you are playing for yourself and your family in terms mm-hmm. of your contract but the game you are playing for your team so <laughs> i don't More understand friend. What was going on through people's head where they were just like, you don't need to care about your team because you're declaring for the draft. <laughs> no, they listen, they told Spencer what Spencer was already doing. He was not caring they about They told the team. Spencer what he wanted to hear. No, but exactly I'm saying what you said. They, they pacified it, but it's definitely was he was already doing it. Spencer did not care about their team. He did not no, care I about know. that. And, the, I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. And the, no, no, I'm just saying that he they told him what he wanted to hear. Mm-hmm. And they said, oh, is they this what you want to hear? It? Exactly. And I think mm-hmm. that that's what was so, to me, very, I won't say out of character, but I think it was just very convenient plot-wise to have them both say, oh, Spencer, 
you're not wrong for thinking about yourself and you're not wrong for wanting the media attention, which is valid, but you don't have to say all of these things like, I watched you put posters up Listen. on your wall. <laughs> it's just but so you know much. what? That's why, that's why, even though I'm having mixed feelings about Kenny, I appreciate it when he called Spencer out and he gave it some straight, like, no, you did that for the you. The only one, too. The only one, too. And yeah. again, they should obviously lives his girlfriend grace is his mother so they should support him but i think that there should be a balance in supporting someone lifting Mm -hmm. them up and also to like you said about kenny pointing out hey you know let's just you just got to admit what it is and that's fine if that's what's what is what it is want the attention Mm -hmm. exactly but let's just be real about what it is um and so once the game comes jordan defers to spencer to break it down the huddle um spencer goes in the first half 10 for 150 which that stat line already is insane uh and shows you how much they uh utilize spencer in the offense 10 for 150 that's crazy that he doesn't have any touchdowns with those sorts of numbers so 150 you know what yards means. I have no idea what 10 <laughs> crazy so it doesn't even make sense that the condors were Listen, um, this is this is losing. part of the pod, this is the part of the podcast where the listeners should be really thankful that you know what that is. Because I have <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Just know that it's a really great if he had ended the, he even if he ended the game with that stat line, that's an amazing stat line um to have to have. Uh okay. so anyway, then before the half, uh it ends on a throw that gets intercepted gets picked off uh, mm-hmm. from Jordan and you know, Spencer comes and says you know it's okay everybody has a bad throw and then he says you know how about you come back for the next one so I don't get picked uh, and so he sort of listens to coach Max advice calls that trick play gets it and then they sort of start to not change the offense because I've heard that too they were like oh they changed the offense without telling Spencer no they went they did their regular <laughs> offense Jordan can't change plays mid-game he just was throwing to different receivers and spreading the ball out more um, instead of going to Spencer for every single play uh, mm-hmm. and they won the game and they won the game and then okay. obviously that's when the team started to get some shine. The team started to get some shine, and uh, the reporters, the reporters were asking different questions to the other receivers and Jordan. Uh, and here's the thing: it's not like Spencer didn't have anybody asking him questions. He had a reporter that came and said, "Oh, you started off the great game, and then did you? How'd you feel about the offensive?" Uh, adjustments and that's a really good way to put it there were adjustments no, he, not changes that's not, that's not all he said he, he but then he said um aren't you afraid that if they keep continue that that pretty much it hurt that his trend chance. yeah yes. that trend yeah that yeah mm-hmm. that hurt his chance to get his his stats that he needs to get drafted into the NFL mm-hmm. uh and he you know again was talking about the team and go team and good for him and then he decided <laughs> That he was gonna steal the spotlight. Wait, he before we jump to that, the... can we jump to the, that with the the two coaches? Um, yeah, literally. You want to pause before this? Sp- we're gonna pause on Spencer declaring the draft. We're gonna go back to our thoughts and feelings on Spencer doing that when he did, and etc. But yeah, we'll jump to the two coaches because they had a disagreement on essentially just the way that the offense should wa- run, and this came. Um, the I wouldn't even say a disagreement be because Kenny didn't much hear him out. You know what I'm saying? Like he had, he had to hear yeah. him out to actually disagree with them. Like he was just a yeah. jerk. I agree. Even the during the interview, is... even during the interview, when it was asking him, like you know, you know what, you know what he can bring to a team, he was just like win games. Like he was a jerk. I feel like that's I yes, but I also feel like that's coaches speak. And that'll all, always be coaches speak. So most coaches, most coaches are jerks in terms of interviews and stuff. So I didn't mind that, but I agree with you in the fact that he didn't hear him out. And I think here's the thing. I don't think that Kenny is a good coach. And I said this way back <laughs> when, when they were trying to make him the head coach. And I said, what qualifications has Does Kenny have? shown? 
then show that he would be a good head coach. Being a good head coach is very different than being a wide receivers coach, which Mm -hmm. is what he was. And I feel like, and I don't think they're going to get this deep into it, but I think that we're starting to see it and that his offense is very focused on a star wide receiver. Um, and he's not capitalizing on the talents of his other people. Cause I think that they have a star running back on the field. Obviously Jordan is a quarterback and I keep hearing this um, sentiment online that Jordan, like maybe Jordan isn't just, he's just not cut out for the pros and he keeps trying and it's X, Y, Z, and he's just not cut out. And I don't think that's true. I don't think it's true I mean, maybe maybe it'll turn out to be true, but Jordan has done nothing but win when he gets the opportunity mm-hmm. <laughs> to show what he can do. He has not let anyone down. In fact, he's only grown and evolved as a quarterback. And I'd say when he had Garrett, what was the conversation? It was oh, this tandem duo of Spencer and Jordan is going to be really dangerous. And I'm like, okay, so when Garrett was the coach, the media and the coaches and everyone seemed to have a very great understanding that they had these two really special players, obviously Spencer being the star that he is. Mm -hmm. He was exponentially greater than, than Jordan, but they still had two really special players on the team. And then it's like, as Kitty has taken over, that's when he just stopped <laughs> using Jordan. And just Listen, <laughs> that's why I'm so glad for Coach. What's his name? Mac. Mac. Yeah. Yes, I'm glad for him because he. It's not Jordan. Don't get too many that actually see his greatness. You know what I'm saying? That right. Usually it's, it's all Spencer. Um. So I'm actually glad that the coach is not, you know, all Spencer, and he understand that he's looking at the overall picture of. Hey, it's a good chance Spencer's not going to be here next year. Um, you know, we can't just focus on Spencer. We can't build the whole right. thing around Spencer. And Kenny exactly. is like, you know, this is my team, and I don't appreciate you talking to my players. Kenny oh, would rather uh, run the team his way and lose. Listen, it's giving John Harbaugh, but he would rather run he, the, team, he, he the team his way and lose than lose uh, yep. and th- then win the game. <laughs> yep. Then win gets win some games. And again, Spencer is amazing, but how much more stats could Spencer get and more successful in terms of winning games? I say all that to say Spencer is the best player. We know that. But I don't think that Jordan doesn't have potential to be a great player as well. So he declared for the draft and said, so y'all can stop asking me that question. And are they going to stop asking him questions about the draft? No, absolutely not. And let's shift over to Layla and Jordan. Jordan was playing with baby AJ in the beginning. And Jordan It was so little, cute. Um, uh, it was it. cute. I think Layla you know what was not? It was so cute. What was it? <laughs> what was it? Cute? Maybe, that, that maybe was that's why cute. she was worried about moving in. The, 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 honestly, we could yeah, skip this whole probably, discussion. And just say that she, look... she was worried. <laughs> Yes, that's probably exactly why she was worried. Because the beginning clip, he's sitting there with the baby, talking baby talk, and like, okay, she Jordan's said, like not ready, ready to have a kid. For this. Exactly. I'm not ready to have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and the interesting thing mm-hmm. is, is that Jordan brought up um, that you know, baby AJ is very willing to look at venues. Uh, oh my God! Yes, virtual <laughs> tours. <laughs> Oh God! And then we got a clip that out. you know, venue talk. Uh, she said, "What did she say? Remind me to use venue talk when I want to end the party early." So it was a little yes, yes, fun and lighthearted teasing ish ish. Listen, ish a big ish ish, the ish a big ish. ish. The ish the ish is doing the heavy lifting. It's not ish. It's just it because it it was hit and she hit him hard with that one. I think they both hit each other a little hard. I think Mm -hmm. they both hit each other a little hard. Yeah, well, because Jordan was the person who started it in terms of uh, he did. Oh, he's the willy, the baby. You know, because it was nobody was talking about that. You're right. Um, You're right. Anyway, tension around tension around the wedding planning is evident. Um, Listen, you know, the first time I watched, I missed it. Been said, but the second time I didn't. It's two years before the... Yeah, I understand. Like, Jordan, you're doing too much. They got two years still. 
before the yeah. wedding. Okay, right. he's doing too much, but I love it. He I love is it doing for Jordan. Too much. I well, love it for him. <laughs> so, to take a break from the wedding, I guess planning tension. There is a new tension that was introduced in terms of in terms of moving in, moving in, and Layla was spending the night. She forgot her charger, and she was just like, "Ah, oh, maybe I should buy one to keep here." And he said, "How about you just move in?" Because <laughs> he's so oh, excited. No. Yes, he he's is. so excited. And you know, Layla's really on the fence about it throughout the whole episode. She talks about it with Ryan before the whole um, self defense. Wait, first she used that baby. First she used that baby while she she was like, "Yeah, with the screaming baby." No. Oh Layla. right. The baby had yeah, nothing she to do uses with the, it. The, <laughs> the screaming baby then she talks about how you know she lives in a place with his mom his sister coop and patience and that would be a lot of people um and then you know she talks about moving in with ryan like i said because she accidentally sent him i think something that jordan has sent her like yeah and then him. she saw jordan the stats the numbers right exactly <laughs> for her club uh but you know, so she, she she was going through it. She's not trying to move in, and Ryan was just like, you know what, your your man wants to move in with you, and you know he just wants to start spending the rest of his life with you. All that to say, at the end of the day, she came back to uh, come to the beach house to spend the night again, and she they talk, and he's just like, man, I just want to. I just want to wake up next to you every day. Starting now. Starting now. Starting now. <laughs> Starting now until forever. Until forever because he's a lover boy. Mm-hmm. Um, and Layla says, what? She said. We not shacking up. I will not shack up with this man. She said, I will not. The fact that she used her parents as it, I don't think that's the real reason. No, I know. That's the reason. You don't think it's, I think it's part of the reason. No, I think it's something deeper going on. <laughs> you said no? Yeah. No, I think, I do think that there is something deeper going on, but I do think that she is now in a space where she's getting married and she's getting older. Uh, and she has some things to reconcile within herself about the way that she grew up and her parents and I do think that that is a portion um of what even if it's not the deeper reason I think that that's still a portion even if she's just scratching the surface nope she's throwing out excuses why not buying it nope (laughs) okay well Carmen and I disagree on that yep I love my Layla but mm -mm, it's just throwing out I don't I don't think it's I don't I don't think it's the deeper reason but I do think it is a reason um and I also don't think that she's conscious of the reason right now. I don't think she is. You don't think so? No, because I think that when she was talking to Ryan, she was really listening to him. I think that when you see Jordan talking about it, she's trying to figure out what to say. And I think that Layla's very much a person that will just say, um, Obviously, this is being challenged a little bit this season. And very, but I don't think that much. she. I think that she would have had something to say in response, other than these, like, "Oh, with the baby crying." Like she's just making jokes, and she's not, you know. So I think that if she knew the reason, she would have a much quicker response. I'd say. But anyway. Yes, we're definitely gonna disagree on that one. <laughs> Go ahead. Regardless, the, they look at his top five wedding band choices. She looked, uh, right after you that. See, you see Jordan's face when he was behind her. Well, mm-hmm. yes. Well, yes. Well, yes. 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 But they had some cute moments at the beginning with the baby before everything went to heck. Listen, no, Jordan was having a moment with the baby. Layla was on the side she of him. She was like, looking at him. What did? Yeah, Layla was on the side. No, she was looking him. at. She was smiling. She was looking at him. Look like, don't get no idea. Ain't no babies over here. <laughs> no, she was smiling. She was laughing. She was laughing. It wasn't That's what I said. I said before. It be- what? Whoa, you're coming <laughs> for Layla Day. Listen, I need sis to get to the to the wow. point. I need to get to the bottom of this. Like, wow. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Is that you hating on Layla? I Dude, love she Layla, was smiling. You know that, it. Uh, she's, Listen. You can't even admit she was smiling at the baby? <laughs> no. No, she wasn't smiling at that baby. She wasn't smiling at the baby. She was looking. She what? You need it to go back forced. and watch. It was forced. You need to go back. And... It no, forced. it wasn't. It was forced. No. 
we're moving on. We're moving on. Oh my god, it was fourth. We're moving on. I do not agree. Uh, live in this book. Mm-hmm. So back at that fireplace with everybody else, uh, when people leave, uh, Spencer tries to give Liv some alone time with Jordan. Jordan's uh, Liv is acting a little weird about it and decides to you know, jet out before Spencer can. And it, we come to find out that Liv is scared to talk to Jordan about the biography. She talks about it with Spencer uh, on, and this biography is on Billy. Uh, and she wants him to help her tell Laura. So, um, also, can we just say, I love that Liv quips her back because when Spitzer asked her, this is so unrelated, but when Spitzer asked her, oh, what should I say to the media? And Liv said, I would just tell him to stop bothering me. I was like, exactly. <laughs> I well, love listen, you, Liv. It's a fact, but it was a fact like, like, he was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Like, you didn't think of that before that? Like, I don't, I don't know. It was just me, right. like, it wasn't that. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I no 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 I, I, not for the not for the scene itself or for Spencer's reaction to it but for, just for Liv's quick re- quick yeah, like, her, her yeah. response was just Liv her response, quick mouth yeah but it was just the action exactly. like she had to say something yeah. that was like out of this world like, life changing yeah yes. no, no no I just thought it was funny <laughs> I just thought it was funny Mm-mm, it was too much um <laughs> but Liv finally sits down with Jordan and set, tells Jordan about what she terms her idea first. Then immediately asks him, oh, so I have your support, so h- could you help? Yeah, essentially asking him to help her tell Laura. Then after that, she drops that she has a publisher for the yes. uh, Billy's biography. Mm-hmm. That's what she messed up. <laughs> and people have had some interesting reactions to this scene. I would like people to go and watch this scene again. Oh, because... The interesting ones I'm talking about in terms of Jordan being out of pocket for his feelings in this scene, and I no, disagree. he definitely wasn't. He definitely wasn't. I think that Liv is valid, just like Spencer. Like Spencer, if you want the attention, that's fine. Just say that, and I'm fine with that. <laughs> if you just say that, you bold, you step it up, and you say it. And Jordan, you have a right to feel away, whatever. But why wouldn't Jordan be entitled to feel the way that he feel? Like, I'm not understanding that because at the end and of the day... That's what I don't get. Because think about, the, think about this. If you have ever dealt with grief, and mind you, again, she's only been back for a week. So if, you're, if you've dealt with grief in your family and a close family member comes to you and is just like, oh, okay, so I'm doing this thing about this person who just passed away. It's pretty recent. And this is the first time I'm you're really say, talking no, just to say them. dad because that's, it's a big factor. I know, but I'm, I don't, because I'm saying if you've ever, I'm saying just in, if people have ever dealt with grief, I'm not trying to make it specific to them. I'm saying step outside of the story. Mm-hmm. And if somebody has ever dealt with grief and it's like, okay, you haven't seen a, this close family member in a while, regardless of whether or not they're your siblings. And it's like, oh, okay, we're doing this. Th- I'm doing, I have this idea to do this thing. Okay, great. I have your support. Okay, great. Can you help me tell this other person? Okay, great. I already have a publisher. Like that is insane <laughs> my, and this to is, hear. And this is my take on it. Lo- love lives to death. Y'all know when it comes to live um, and Layla, that's, that's my boo. But Jordan, we're talking about Liv here, right? Um, she's a do what she want to do and then, you know, tell everybody else And about that has it. been her in the past. Yeah. Yes. What you mean? It's still her now. That's like what she did. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it's, I was... her, it's her now. Listen, look, because like, even though she said like, oh, if you guys not agree with it, I'm not going to do it. I didn't believe it. Um, but okay. Because Liv is going to do what Liv wants to do. I had a hard time. Yeah, I think I had a hard time. I think that she would have followed through, but I had a hard time believing the um, the meaning and the sentiment behind it. I think that she would do it, but the meaning is, you know your family is not going to ask you to give up. Not to do it. Exactly. Especially those two. Especially her mom and Jordan. Feels a little hollow, exactly, yes. to say like, Oh, if you don't want me to do and I know that she wasn't trying to do that, but that's just ha- because of the way that she brought it up, 
that's just how it is, is that, okay, Liv, this is already set in motion. It's like Laura's response when she tells Laura, she's just like, oh, this is already, ha- okay. So it's like it's almost like happening. they're back to the corner. No, like they're back to the corner exactly. to agree. It's just like um, Jordan said, it's really already happening. So you're not really asking our permission, you know? And I honestly think that even her thoughts on, she wanted them to be a part of it and she didn't want to do, came after what Jordan said to her about how she was going to do it anyways. I don't think her original thought was to really include them in on it. Like she wanted them to know about it. Maybe. I, I feel like she did want them included. And that's why I feel actually, I think part of that is why I feel like Jordan, I understood his point of view in terms of one of the first things that Liv said to him, even even before she talked to Jordan and was only talking about it with Spencer, is that I and I think I I hope I'm not mis uh, misquoting this, but it was just that oh Jordan can help me tell my mom as well. So regardless of whether or not it was like pieces of the story or however she thought about it in terms of the actual writing of it mm-hmm. and interviewing or whatever. She wanted Jordan's help to tell Laura to soften the blow. And so it's things like that, whereas that's one of the first things that she said to Jordan. And he's just hearing about this idea. And I love that he said, I need a second to process this and that he voiced that. Mm -hmm. And then for her to say, oh, yeah, well, you already said that you were cool with it. And he was like, I said it was a cool idea. I did not like (laughs) I didn't know you asking me to like tell our mom and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so it was just this fact that she already had this master plan in her head that was oh, I'm going to tell Jordan about it so that he can help me with. And again, I don't think that she was consciously going about it that way, but that's the way that she did it. And that's the, that's the way Liv, that's Liv. Like, it's like he said, your stories tend to like blow this family up. So he didn't lie. <laughs> he didn't lie. He, he didn't, didn't lie. lie. He didn't lie. He did, did, did he lie though? <laughs> did he lie? Where's the lie? Point to the and lie. And people said, people said that, um, that she didn't need Jordan's permission and Laura's permission and all she of that. Didn't. She and didn't. And I agree. She didn't. She didn't need their permission. And I don't think that, number one, they were responding in a way that was saying, oh, you can't do this without my permission. Yes. In fact, Jordan says right off the bat, like, if this is something that you want to do, do it. Go ahead and do it. It wasn't until she said, oh, I want your help with X, Y, Z, that he was just like, wait, hold on. And that's when everything <laughs> went to went to crap a little bit is because mm-hmm. he was just like, oh, I thought this was just a you project thing. And that now you're saying like, you want cool. me to be yes. exactly now you want me to be involved in that way. Now you have a publisher? Like what's going yeah. on? And so when, she said she was, had, when she said she had a publisher, that's when it really went south for Jordan. Which is cause... crazy because having a publisher means you got an advance, you already been sitting in drafts like <laughs> wait, wait, wait because let's not forget she said she has a deal so therefore right they don't want oh as a publisher so he was right. not wrong he was not wrong that you was gonna do this without us like i don't think she had the thought of and then she's mentioning it. these random people from england who have already you know known about the story it's, and so it's like Again, that's fine for her perspective because it just happened that way. Like she was in mm-hmm. London. She's, you know, she and, and she explained. She was she I think she explained to Laura, uh, I was already in the process of doing this and then things just progressed to a point and I was trying to figure out how to tell how you. How this is exactly. as, so yeah, that's why it's this one of, progressing. It's one of two things. One of two things. One, she was gonna go along, she was gonna keep going it whether they agreed or not. Or two, she never had doubt that they was going to disagree. You know what I'm saying? Like, she never, even though she, like, I want you agreement, like we said, it's Laura and Jordan. They're going to encourage her. So I feel like she kept going with it as far as getting a deal because she knew they was going to be okay with it at the end. Right. And again, I don't think that she, like, consciously I do. was doing it. <laughs> I do. I love her. Okay, that's fine. But I do. That's fine. I mean, I mean, when she was back in London, I don't think that she was consciously doing it. It would ju- it had just progressed to a point that like skyrocketed before she knew what was going, like kn- could really take it in. Um, but I think once she got to LA, mm-hmm. she should have had that conversation as soon as possible. And I think again, she came at it um, 
with Jordan in a very different way than she came at her with Laura because when they get to dinner and by the way let's take a pause to say that Jordan and Layla have this conversation about um him feeling like he's tired of people telling him that he's a part of something Mm -hmm. and then treating him like he's not and I think that that had to do with football and that had to do with Liv's story and Liv's and story listen, in a way that because I also remember one of the things that he paused and said when she, when, when she was saying you know Liv still dealing with the loss of their dad he was like she's mm-hmm. not the only one like right he he's dealing with stuff too right and part of that is Jordan right part of that is just Jordan needs to step up and become a leader and all of those things like he deferred to Spencer so that's on him Um, But I think there's a part of it that's also he has never gotten the opportunity consistently or the chance consistently to show his abilities and then have somebody, a coach specifically, double down on that. Mm -hmm. I just feel like a lot of people haven't been honest with him throughout his whole life, even how they see him. And that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So back to live back to live and i get what i appreciated and this is where i continue to love to see the growth of where Liv is right now is that she apologizes to jordan and she says you know i was wrong for how i handled it earlier and i really appreciated that from her um and just saying that i'll try again and really just saying i really am just just hear me out about the idea etc and somebody was just like, people are like, Jordan's not even Billy's son or whatever. And like Spencer's <laughs> really Billy's son. And I'm like, yeah, we know this, which is why Jordan still has this issue because he's never had somebody believe in him. I thought, I thought we all agree. That's what was happening. <laughs> we, I agree. Yes. We're, we're, all, we're aligned on that one. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so they're all at this dinner with Laura. Um, and Liv tells Laura again what I want for you. Uh, Liv tells Laura about the book idea in a different way because she says all of that stuff at the top in terms of, you know, this, I was trying to figure out how to say it and it wasn't coming out and I wish I had done it sooner, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I want to make sure that you're on board with this idea. I have a publisher, X, Y, Z. Does that, um, and Jordan, of course, agrees. And she, he says, you know, really what I want you to feel is like you feel like Beverly is your home again uh re what Layla told him about you know she lost her dad etc 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 um but but that's the thing did she say that did Liv say that the reason why I don't feel like home is because her dad I don't recall that well I don't think that Layla was saying that is the direct tie I think that she was saying that the project was this this biography like it wasn't just another article or another project to her or another essentially all of the ways in the past in which things could blow up the family Mm -hmm. she's still this project in particular is very close to her heart because she's still grieving obviously and she wants okay gotcha yeah Coop just muddled it. Coop was giving everybody a game of telephone with you know Liz, how Coop Liz is. Coop reasons. do it all the time. Layla's, Layla's gonna come through for her best friend and understand why she's doing what she's doing. Like nobody oh. told Coop to repeat that. Nobody told Coop. To repeat but Layla that. got it. Layla understood immediately. She yes. said she didn't have to tell me. I already knew anyway. it. So all that. To <laughs> I say, guess. <laughs> all that to say. Um. <laughs> also this someone said Laura had the right reaction and I think she had the right reaction because Liv came at it differently and she told again she told Layla Laura everything right away uh, but I don't I feel like started, Laura Laura face reaction her first reaction was not yeah um, she didn't she wasn't happy either she was, yeah she looked at like wait I mean, what happy is, happy is not the right term but she was shocked as well as Jordan was yeah but again Liv but she started it with who- she said Liv for what she is. That's she been. Yeah, and, I, yes. and I also think Liv started with, I should have said something sooner. And she started off with like her, she started off being apologetic, which is not how she came up at it with Jordan. I think for Laura, as far as her being her mom, like she doesn't like everything Liv does, but she have, she have accepted who Liv is. So therefore that was why her response was, you know, yeah, do it. Because at the end of the day, I also she think she thought about it, and like you said, that um, encourage her to do it. But she yeah, was not going to yeah. tell her not to do it. 
but she was not right. Yeah, not I don't do think I, any of the, and again, none of them said not to do it or that they didn't withhold permission. Jordan's whole issue again was him, his involvement, and what Liv asked to be his involvement. Mm-hmm. That's what the issue was. It wasn't about permission or anything. And when things. when she first started telling him, she made it sound like it was just still an uh, idea inside. Right, her exactly. And that's what I'm saying is she she didn't she withhold, withheld information. Yeah. Yeah, this time around. Whereas with Jordan, she withheld some information until he had some responses. Mm-hmm. The twins never stay mad at each other. They never stay mad at each other for long anyways. Right. So that's one thing exactly. I love about them. They never stay exactly. mad at each other for long. Then Spencer comes to uh, live at the end of the episode and says... Uh, this doesn't feel like home? Did you tell Jordan <laughs> that this doesn't feel like home? <laughs> I'm glad you said it and not me. So maybe some people some, will come for you if I keep this in the public discussion. That's but okay. Yeah, um, I welcome. I'll come. Come, come. So yes, it's okay. Yes, I love him. Everybody knows I still love that's, Spencer. That's what Spencer said. He did. He was bothered. I think I don't think he heard anything else after Jordan said that. I think after Jordan said that, he didn't hear anything else at, the, at that table. Right. Right. So. um and he said, you know, a piece of me, a piece of me was missing. And it was, <laughs> it was. And that's true. It was it's me. And it was. It obviously. was. I understand. I think he was just, I think he just more, feel, he was more scared that because if she feel like it doesn't feel home, she's not going to stay. Um, but right. she, like, she brought his attention, like, but hey, we don't know where you're going to end up. Like, even if I start feeling like tomorrow, this is home again. You know that don't mean you're gonna be here, you know. And like, I love that she said that to him because yeah. that's reality. Um, and he said he said that oh, LA this will always be home. home for me. And she said, I but thought he the same can't thing. Say that, yeah, he can't say that for certain. And I'm glad that they're starting to think about the real adult decisions that they're making because again, I think now's a good time to bring up. He didn't tell anyone that he was declaring for the draft. No, he didn't. Anyone. That's, that's how they said they was the fact that the attention was coming out to him that he spit that out like that. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. But the fact remains is that he made that decision for himself, which you know what? He took Grace and Liv's advice. He did. And now well, that's now he just technically he took Grace and Billy advice. Well go ahead. Because she was Billy <laughs> She was Billy in the moment. <laughs> she said, right. she You're said correct. wait, what, what is his mood? <laughs> yes, yes. It was so cute. So he took Grace, it was really cute. <laughs> so he, he took Grace and Billy's advice in terms of thinking about himself. And now that he's thinking about himself, now the very real after effects of what Grace told him not to think about. <laughs> Mm-hmm. See how life comes at you fast. <laughs> <You're so stupid. laughs> oh God! Came back, came back for him, and I'm just saying all that to say I stand on what I said about Grace and that being just, just wild. <laughs> what she was saying. <laughs> um, but you know, we'll see how Bolivia deals with that. Uh, yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely gonna be a challenge. That's definitely gonna be a challenge for Olivia. Because it, sure. it, it's a good chance that she may go back to London and he may be gone. We'll, we'll see, because we don't know. We don't know how it's gonna really go. It's still too early. It's still too early to say what's gonna happen with them as far as living situation. Right, right. So we'll see. It was a it, it was an interesting end to the to the episode. And that's it. This emotional nice. episode, yeah, this, it was draining. This 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 episode drained me. Like everything <laughs> was on this. Train. Listen, everything was on a a high, like a a, a high low. Like it was like everything yeah. was everything was something very emotional. Right. Yeah. Right. No, I agree. I agree. It was a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. I mean, y'all see hour and 20 30 minute conversation exactly um, it was a lot it was a lot lot. patreon you're getting all of this the public you're getting some of this um (laughs) we got got time restrictions going on but that was the episode that was the episode and thanks for listening to hear the extended conversation click the link in my bio to join our patreon thanks